Hi everybody, I'm Katie. Welcome back to my kitchen. And like I promised in my last video, today I'm going to show you how to make filo, Greek filo for pita. So what do you say? Let's start painting. Okay, let's see the ingredients, what we're going to need so we can start making our filo. First things first, we're going to need a um, rolling pin. You can use a rolling pin like this, or if you can find this is perfect for pita, a rolling pin like this. This is what I'm going to use today. Seven and, 750 grams of all-purpose flour. Uh, three cups of all-purpose flour. Again, I'll show you what we're going to do with that later on. Some salt, uh, one tablespoon of vinegar, a little bit of olive oil, and three cups of water. And here we might not use it all. So let's start making our dough. The first thing that I'm going to put in a large bowl is my water. I'm going to put two cups in the beginning. One, two. And to that, I'm going to add my salt. It's about a tablespoon and a half. The shot of vinegar, one tablespoon, and a little bit of olive oil. It's about two, two and a half tablespoons of olive oil. Okay, that's it. Now, where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mix it all together. I'm going to combine it all together. So my salt can dissolve. The vinegar here that I put in this, that we're going to put in this batter, that I put in the water, is going to give me a beautiful, crispy, flaky uh, filo. It's not going to be like a sheet, like a wet sheet the next day. This filo, you can eat it after two to three days. Okay, now it's ready so we can put in our flour. A little bit at a time, because we might not use it all. We're going to put it um, on the side so it can rest. Just for half an hour, no more. Let me put the rest. A little at a time and just combine this is going to give you we're going to make a small pita this is part one we're not I'm not going to show you what uh, the filling or something like that we're going to do that on another video today I'm just showing you how I'm going to make the filo okay I'm going to finish with the rest and I'll be back to show you what it's going to look like okay your, my dough is ready I want you to come close so you can see what it looks like I want it to be nice and light very soft and sticky it has to be sticky it's not supposed to be condensed dense and hard this is going to rest like I said for about 35 to 40 minutes so everything can combine very well and so it can rest okay because you're not going to be able to spread it out and like I said in the beginning of the video I've made one previously so we can have a head start and I'm going to show you how we're going to part it. It's been rested. Here it is. It's beautiful. It's nice and sticky. You see that? Okay, I'm just going to take it out of my bowl. I'm going to spread it through so I can make my pieces. Just cut it in half and then again like that. One more time. And this one's going to give us another one. We're going to put them back in our bowl so they don't get dry like that. So we have perfect portions. This is going to be a pita for about 10 people, 8 to 10 people, I should say. Cover it up. Oh, let me get a piece, of course, so I can show you what it looks like. Like that. Okay, now, all I'm going to do, I've taken my gloves off, I've washed my hands very well, because I have to handle um, my rolling pin. All I'm doing is spreading it out and putting it in, like that. Spreading it out and pulling it in. A little dough like that. I'm going to put it on my surface. I'm going to dust it through some flour. Like I said, I'm going to use my old-fashioned grandma pin, rolling pin. And what I'm doing is I'm just spreading my little dough so we can uh, double, triple, 
and sides. And always remember to dust on top. Once you dust, do that, turn it over. And again, you see how it's opening? Very nice and finely. If you have a thick um, dough, what I mean by thick is, if this is thick, it's gonna be cement. You won't be able to eat it. Don't be afraid of it. If there are mistakes, you just stick it back together. It's very forgivable. And do and uh, repeat your process. This is not hard. It just takes practice. That's all. I've been doing this for 15 years, so and I've had a lot of practice. So I think I know what I'm doing. It's very easy. It doesn't um, take you a lot of time to do it, and it's enjoyable. Bring your kids in your kitchen and make them help you. Like that. Now, it's doubled in size. I'm putting, again, a little bit of flour, turning it over. And repeating the process. I'm going to show you my secret to a perfect filo in just a few minutes. Let me just open it a little bit more. If you can find a rolling pin like this, this thin, it'll be perfect. And it should, if you can't, you have to find one that's very light. It shouldn't be heavy. All right, at this point, what I'm going to do, I'm picking up my, my sheet, because it looks like a sheet, and I'm just swirling it around like that. What we're doing here is we're increasing and stretching out our dough. It's going to make your life much easier, and you're going to have the perfect filo. Because you should have a very thin filo. Filo has to be very thin. It should not be thick. We're putting it on the table again. We're going to dust it again. This is in the way, and this is in the way. Just put it on the side. And repeating the process again. See how nice it's spreading out? Okay, we're not going to fill this pita today, this filo, because it's, um, I want to show you how I, uh, I do it. We're going to do it another day. Maybe tomorrow I'll show you how to make some copita. The real kind, the real McCoy. No fake things here. With real spinach. Okay. It's tripled in size. And now I see, you see that? It needs more. Thinning out. We're going to thin it out more. So I'm picking it up again, like that, very gently. I'm just doing it with my two fists. It's going to help you. Just spread it around like that. My grandmother used to say that if a filo, your filo is good, you should be able to see through it. And that's the truth. Now it's become four times as big as we started. It didn't take much time. Maybe five minutes passed. That's it. Okay, this filo is ready. And for you to understand, okay, I wrote, I'm wearing red, and I'm, I don't know what I was thinking. I should have been wearing white. Okay, now this is the secret. You're going to pick up your filo like this. Let the cameraman come a little closer. You're going to blow under your filo. If that happens, that means you have 100% the perfect Perfect feel. Let me show you one more so you can be sure. Okay? I'm putting it on my surface, dusted surface, putting some flour on top again. And with my rolling pin, I'm putting a little bit of pressure and spreading it out like that. And again. Once you make, you get the hang of this, you're going to want to make pita every week. Because in a Greek household, we have it on every special occasion. Christmas, Easter, name days, birthdays, weekends when loved ones come over. And again, we're going to put some flour. Like that. And spreading it out. I 
I'm showing you again because I think you like the part which where I blow under the the phyllo and it really puffs up really nicely. Okay, at this point I'm picking up my phyllo with my two fists and I'm spreading it out like that. Your your children, like I said, are gonna love it if you put them in the kitchen and they start playing with this dough. They're gonna be asking for pita all the time. Like that, it's doubled in size. I'm putting a little bit of flour again and spreading it out. Picking it up with my two hands, two fists, and pulling. We're rotating the fetal all round and around and again, like that. See how it becomes stretching beautifully? Don't worry about the holes. Nobody's gonna know under your, your filling. Like that. Spread out in the corners. The corners are the best thing in the pita. Everybody wants them. And here is the test. We're picking it up and blowing under. Stay tuned because we're going to make spanakopita.